Be the Talk, episode 324, featuring Mohsen Maimon. Welcome to Be the Talk. We go behind the talk seven days a week for tips and techniques to help you change the world. I'm Nathan Eckel, and a talker myself, I'm interviewing others who change the world with their talk. You can too, even if you've never given a talk before. Let's get started with today's show. We are live with Mohsen Maimon. Mohsen, are you ready to talk? Absolutely. Mosin Maimon is an immersive learning advocate, a game designer, and uses technology to change the way learning happens by creating real, authentic, lifelike learning experiences that lead to realization and then change. Building great leaders to build great organization, Mosin Maimon, welcome to the talk. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Your talk is called Limitless Growth Through Immersive Learning, and it's actually one of four talks that you've already given. You've got a fifth already lined up in a couple of months, so welcome to the four-timers club uh, and soon to be the five-timers club, sir. Thank you. Thank so you. this was a, a autobiographical talk. You're talking about how you grew up in an Atlantic City, New Jersey high school. There were all kinds of significant, amazing challenges all over the place. And there's just a classic kind of sca- uh, tale of bootstrapping, really kind of s- scraping yourself up from the bootstraps, finding a mentor, finding a business competition, finding the, the resources that you need that weren't being volunteered by the environment at all. You had to go after what you needed to grow and to change and become the person you are today. And you summed it up in your talk. Please, Mosin, take us behind the talk. Right. So, um, I mean, really the, the thought process and the intent of the talk was to share my story. Uh, it's, it had been a, uh, a difficult yet uh, enjoyable experience in the last several years that I grew up in Atlantic City and then, uh, finally made it out of, uh, out of the city and then, uh, and then into a corporate, uh, job. I didn't know any corporate people at the time, uh, and to find, um, uh, mentors and people that kind of guide me along the way. And in that process, you know, I kind of, I kind of discussed Discovered that there is a, a certain underlying uh, model or an approach that uh, if that I've, I had become uh, coming to understand uh, this model, and uh, and and I believe that if I could share this model with people, then perhaps people could also uh, succeed in whatever it is that they wanted to do. And that model, which I call the preparedness equation. Yeah. And, and it's a very simple, simple concept. Yeah, take us through is, the model because I didn't, I, I usually catch on those things from the talks. I'm, I totally missed it. So take, walk us through, <laughs> walk us through the model. I, I, I missed that piece. <laughs> sure. Sure. So there are, there are two parts to the model, really. What I'm saying here is that there is, uh, when, when we talk about being prepared, truly prepared, um, you're, you're looking at the two aspects of it. One is your, your will or, or your, your willingness to achieve something. Uh, and the other is your circumstances or the opportunity. Uh, so the whole talk revolves around how you can, uh, manipulate and work with your circumstances to make them an enabler to your success, as opposed to just applying will to achieve an objective, uh, you're utilizing your, your circumstances to enable you to win more. And, and that's pretty much the summit, uh, summation of the entire talk. Yeah, well, and I, I think mindset and and how you approach the environment that you have, absolutely huge. And the more mindful that you can be and the more flexible that you can be. Uh, so, speaking as someone who uh, adaptability is strength number 32 out of 32 strength finder strengths, uh, that is something that I am continually working on, especially after um, a few years ago, I had the opportunity to realize how, how inflexible I was. So I'm, I got my ear Years on for sure. Um, you know, the other thing that comes to mind, Mosin, um, a couple of days ago, I was reading a study about researchers, and maybe I'm oversimplifying this, but they concluded that luck really had the was the the critical factor in helping people amass a whole lot more money than other people did. And I, I remember looking at that study um, and thinking, you know, I think it's mindset. I think it's attitude. I think what what the researchers are calling luck. 
um, and, and looking just at the data. I think there's an attitude. I think there's a propensity to being flexible and being easy to work with that has a, a lot to do with that. So, uh, at the end of the report, it did say, Hey, there's, there's more to be, uh, gleaned from this. So that, <laughs> that's just something that's, that's coming to mind. Um, so in your circumstances, back to you. Uh, this is really powerful because you, you're not just talking the talk, you're walking the walk. And you really had no other, from, from the sound of things, watching your talk, you had no other recourse. You didn't have the resources that you need. You had to become super adaptable. You had to become super open and have the right willpower to be able to kind of attract those resources and, and really be going to those resources instead of just kind of waiting for the phone to ring. So can you take us a little bit behind the persistence that you had as well as the, the, the positive attitude that strengthened in your life instead of getting getting more and more angry, resentful, bitter, when the more you had to pers- persist, the more you actually uh, found that you were able to open more doors as a result of that. Sure. So uh, so one of the first opportunities that I got was an opportunity to start a business uh, in a uh, multi-level marketing uh, sort of a, a an environment. And, uh, you know, little did I know and didn't have a whole lot of advice, but the first set of uh, people that I talked to about this and they said, this is a pyramid scheme. I mean, <laughs> that's what we always say. It. It's a pyramid right? scheme. <laughs> it's a ground floor <laughs> opera. Get out. <laughs> right. So, so they said, you know, if you see those people run the other way and, and, uh, and, you know, I, I somehow couldn't, um, get myself to, to do that. And that's mostly because. Uh, the people that I, I got to get to know, uh, fortunately, this happened before some of these people told me their um, experiences or, or their ideas around, um, you know, the, the multi-level marketing. But uh, what I what I got to learn through the process was I never I never made it big in the marketing multi-level marketing world. But uh, what was interesting was the fact that um, the, there were people who were willing to help you, and they were willing to help you learn. They were willing to help you grow. I had mentors who kind of guided me and coached me. And I think I made the best of it in that opportunity uh, and in that moment. Uh, And utilizing that allowed me to kind of springboard off of that world into uh, landing a corporate job. Uh, that, that kind of paid me um, slightly big bucks <laughs> over then a lot more than the, the manual labor that would have paid me for sure. <laughs> Well, and that's, I mean, that can be a really good thing. I mean, it's easy to discount, you know, multi-level and, and, uh, direct sales or whatever, whatever, you know, they're always having to find new buzzwords <laughs> every sure. few, few years. But I mean, I've, I found, uh, kind of dipping my toe in that in past lives. I mean, you do find people that are willing to help you. You do have a, an upline or whatever the right name is. You have mentorship. You usually get exposed to that book, Think and Grow Rich, which is a great book yep. that teaches persistence yep. and, it's one of those books that you either walk away and you don't do the work or you you change yourself and change your attitude and do the work. And so and you in your, your case, you know, was was your corporate job, was that related to sales or, or you know, that kind of thing in any way, perchance? Uh, I'm, I'm just curious. Not at all, actually. Not at it all. Was, uh, okay. No, no not at all. In fact, okay. it was um, it was an opportunity that I had. So, so the thing was that one of the things that that this process taught me was the ability to talk to people and the ability to network and the ability to to connect with people. And it was just one fine day that I was walking out of a grocery store and I met this this gentleman who I just kind of chanced upon and, and engaged in a conversation. By the time we were um, at the parking lot, the gentleman offered me an opportunity. Um, and the opportunity was for, um, for being a business analyst with his company. This is an, an IT. Um, eventually, I got to work with via him in, uh, at, at companies like Delta Airlines and Walmart, which was, which was huge for me at that time. And, uh, and subsequently, that led to other opportunities that opened doors for me. Oh, excellent. So we've been enjoying this talk with uh, Mohsen Maiman. Uh, his talk is called Limitless Growth Through Immersive Learning. And we're going to be back with Mohsen in just a moment in the Blitz Round. Hey, Talk Universe. I hope you've been enjoying today's episode with today's guest. But you know what? Many people want more than that. Many people that listen to Be The Talk actually want to give a talk. And if that's you, you're not alone. Listen to the rest of this podcast at the end, 
I'll have a free resource for you just for listening. And we're back with the Blitz Round with Mosin Maimon. His talk is called Limitless Growth Through Immersive Learning, and it is time for the Blitz Round. I'm going to ask him a series of either-or questions related to the preparation and performance of his recent talks, um, soon to be five of them. So, Mosin, are you ready? Absolutely. <laughs> all right. So uh, first first off, and you can kind of conglomerate all five of your talks here, soon to be five or, or this one or whatever. Uh, were you invited or, or did you apply for these talks? So I was invited, but there's an interesting story. I don't know if I have the time to tell you that. Sure. Tell us the story. So, so I was, I was attending a, a TED talk and, um, and uh, as a, as an audience and, um, there was something interesting that this, uh, this specific TED, uh, TEDx show did. And they invited people who ever wanted to speak at TED. And I, this time I'd never spoken at, uh, TEDx before. And they invited me to, invited a, a bunch of people who ever raised their hands first or showed up at the stage first would get the opportunity. Oh my so gosh. I got up Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. I got they, up they opened up the stage <laughs> first. First come, first serve, and give a give an impromptu talk that you've never uh, given before. <laughs> Absolutely. So oh I got up God. there and and I said um, I said uh, I, I started off with something to the effect of I. Uh, did something that allowed me to go from earning $10 an hour to $70 an hour. If you want to know more, then ask for my talk. <laughs> oh, so you were doing like a fire pitch, like a, like a 30 <laughs> second much. fire pitch to audition right Pretty on much. the spot. What a cool idea. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I added a bit more, bit more masala to it and added a bit more spice in the process, but, but that was the gist of it. And, uh, afterwards, you know, people walked up to me and they asked me, how did you do that? What happened? And then of course, others, the, the curators got in touch with me and one thing led to another. Oh, you are a smart guy. What, what, so I, I mean, myself, I guess. <laughs> find out how, how you two can, uh, septuple your income. <laughs> And here, who doesn't want to hear about that? Oh my gosh! All right. Well, um, yeah. You know, um, are you a a memorizer, an improviser, or a blender in terms of how I'm you prepare blender. for these? You blender, okay. I'm a blender. I like to memorize as well. My first talk, I, I had recorded the whole thing and I must have heard it like I don't know, 15 million times mm -hmm. over to the point that it was just like you know, mechanical for me. So all I had to do was get up there and spit it out. Uh, but, but to be really honest, I, I'm, I'm just terrified of standing in front of an audience and speaking. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you, therefore you've done it almost five times now in a, in a Ted format, as opposed to every other uh, speaking that's out there. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, are you an, have you been an opener? Have you been a closer or in between? I think I've been I've been in between all the time. Oh, no I've, I've never had the opportunity to either. I've been just before lunch. So so that talk, the immersive learning talk, I was just before lunch, and you know we were already running late. So I had to crack oh. a joke about you know I'm I'm standing between you and your lunch right now. So it's a very tough spot to be in, and it got everybody rolling. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's not an easy spot. And right after lunch is even harder sometimes. That, oh, that yeah. poor, uh, fellow or lady that has to, uh, to keep everybody out of the food coma. Not an easy <laughs> thing. So, uh, you know, cut for time question. What was the most painful part, uh, that you had to cut out? painful part that I had to cut out. I would say that it's um, it's telling the whole story because uh, you're not sure about your audience. You're not sure if they'll be able to digest it. There are some gruesome parts to it. So so you have to be careful as to, you know, everything that you're saying and uh, in the interest of being transparent, but not too transparent, kind of finding that balance. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, what was the, uh, what was the most unexpected, strange, or just plain weird thing that happened during or right before your talk? So one of the talks that I did, um, the curator kind of walks up to me and says, Hey, uh, I know you're a game designer and you make games. So is it possible to play your game on the stage? And I'm like, wow. Okay. That's a first. And, uh, and so we made it happen though. We had a, a group of uh, 10 people come up and play the game live. Uh, and we talked about the, the dynamics within the game and how the, the gameplay itself, because it's multiplayer, led to realizations for the players who played the game. Good deal. Well, we've been enjoying this conversation with Mosin Maiman. His talk 
is called Limitless Growth Through Immersive Learning. If you want to find out more about that talk and watch that talk, go to our show notes page at bethetalk.com, as well as uh, you can go to uh, Mosin's company uh, website. It's called Memco, excuse me, Memcorp immersive.com memcorp immersive.com we will have a link there as well and we will be back in just a moment with Mosin Maimon and his final word of advice hey talk universe i hope you enjoyed today's episode and if you want to give the talk to change the world but you don't know how or even where to start no problem at all Go to be the talk.com forward slash get accepted for my new five day email course that'll show you how absolutely free. Just go to be the talk.com forward slash get accepted. And we're back with Mosin Maiman. It's time for the final word of advice. What is it? So my word of advice to whoever wants to speak um, at, at a TED stage would be to uh, really know your why. Uh, if you know your why, I mean, I, I'm a person who is incredibly uh, scared of getting on the stage and talking. But uh, because I know my why and I know what it is that I'm doing, and why am I doing what I'm doing, makes it so much more palatable and easier for me to get up there and just share my story because that's all that matters. Mosin Maiman, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on the talk and share your wisdom with Talk Universe today. Thank you. Pleasure's mine. Thanks for listening to Be the Talk. For tips and resources to help you change the world, go to be the talk.com. See you tomorrow.